Edgar Allan Poe The Black Cat Have you ever wondered what hides in the depths of the human heart? Or how a simple, seemingly innocent choice can spiral into horror? Edgar Allan Poe's The Black Cat invites you on a chilling journey into the dark corners of the human psyche, where love and tenderness twist into violence and madness. This story isn't just a spooky tale to share in dimly lit rooms. It's a profound exploration of guilt, the destructive path of alcoholism, and the eerie way our worst deeds find a way to surface, no matter how deeply we bury them. Through the eyes of a man who loses himself to his darkest impulses, we're offered a mirror to our own potential for darkness, but also a cautionary tale about the consequences of letting that darkness take control. Ready for a walk on the wild side? Let's dive in. Alcohol's Path to Madness Imagine a man who prides himself on his gentle nature and deep appreciation for animals, particularly his pets, which he treats with utmost kindness. This is the picture the narrator of The Black Cat paints of his younger self. A man seemingly at peace with the world, with a soft spot for the companionship of animals. Among these pets stands out one particular black cat named Pluto, who becomes his favourite companion, sharing a special bond forged in mutual affection. But life has a way of taking unexpected turns, and for our narrator, this turn spirals downward with the increasing grip of alcohol. Drinking starts off as a casual habit, but soon morphs into a fierce addiction, drastically transforming his personality. That once gentle nature is corroded by the abrasive influence of alcohol, revealing a darker, more volatile temperament. What was previously unthinkable becomes action, as the man starts to direct his frustrations and anger towards his once-adored pets and even his wife. Innocent beings that once brought joy and comfort now find themselves at the mercy of his inexplicable wrath. Among those caught in this wave of cruelty is Pluto, the black cat. The bond they shared becomes a distant memory, as the man, in a drunken stupor, commits an unthinkable act of violence. He gouges out one of Pluto's eyes. This moment marks a point of no return, the first step into a realm of darkness and guilt that begins to eat away at him. Yet this guilt does not manifest as redemption or a bid to return to better ways. Instead, it festers, transforming into a twisted irritation with the cat, now a living reminder of his own fall from grace. This irritation, fueled by alcohol and a perverse logic that defies reason, leads to a horrific decision. In an attempt to erase his guilt and the evidence of his first cruel act, the narrator hangs Pluto from a tree, an act of brutality that seals his descent into madness. But the universe has a way of keeping score, and retribution comes swiftly. That very night, the man's house mysteriously catches fire, leaving him nothing but ruins and ashes. Among the few remnants is a chilling image on a surviving wall, the silhouette of a hanged cat, surrounded by a crowd. A grim reminder, perhaps, of the inescapable nature of guilt and the dark consequences of one's actions. Yet, despite this stark warning, the narrator's path remains unchanged. In a twisted turn of fate, he finds another black cat, bearing an uncanny resemblance to Pluto, but with a distinct white patch. This new cat becomes a complex symbol of both guilt and the chance for redemption. However, the man's feelings towards the cat evolve from initial fondness to intense loathing, mirroring his journey into further darkness. As we delve into this tale, we witness a person's transformation under the corrosive influence of alcohol, from gentle kindness to unspeakable cruelty. It's a harrowing reminder of how easily the things we love can become the targets of our deepest hate and how one act of violence can set us on a path from which there's no easy return. The spiral continues. With the ruins of his home behind him, and the chilling episode of Pluto's haunting image etched into his fate, our narrator stumbles upon a new beginning, or so it seems. Life has a way of offering second chances, but whether we seize them to make amends, or to spiral further down into our miseries is a matter of choice. In this murky haze of guilt and unresolved torment, the man encounters another black cat. This cat is not just any cat, but a doppelganger of Pluto, except for a striking white patch on its chest. At first, this new companion represents a beacon of hope, a chance for redemption, and perhaps a way to heal the deep scars left by his previous actions. But as the story unfolds, 
we realize that our deepest wounds require more than just time or even a second chance to heal. They demand introspection and a genuine change of heart, neither of which our narrator is prepared to offer. Initially, he is drawn to the cat, seeing it as a sign, perhaps as an opportunity to right the wrongs he's committed. But the human mind is complex, housing corners shadowed by guilt and remorse. Rather than confronting these shadows, the man's guilt manifests as annoyance towards the new cat. This annoyance quickly turns into a deep-seated loathing. It's as if the cat, with its one missing eye, serves as a constant living reminder of his past cruelty. The white patch, which at first seemed innocuous, begins to resemble a gallows, a grim omen of judgment and retribution. As days turn into nights, the man's internal conflict intensifies. His home, once a place of solitude and comfort, now feels like a prison, with the cat as his jailer, watching and judging his every move. This relentless surveillance gnaws at him, turning his once superficial annoyance into irrational fear and loathing. His attempts to avoid the cat only result in increased encounters, each more unsettling than the last, as if the cat is a spectre haunting his every step. The tension reaches its peak when the man's wife, who remains unnamed but serves as a beacon of patience and understanding throughout the ordeal, tries to intervene. She sees the growing turmoil within her husband and perhaps, in her wisdom, understands the symbolism of the cat better than he does. However, her attempts to mediate the growing discord between man and animal only serve to deepen her husband's agitation. In a moment of madness, where irrational fear and deep-seated guilt collide, the man decides to rid himself of the cat once and for all. But fate, it seems, has a different plan. His wife's intervention becomes the catalyst for a horrifying act. In a twisted climax to the spiralling madness, the man's attempt to kill the cat results in the murder of his wife, who becomes an unintended victim of her husband's deep-rooted torment and instability. This dreadful turn of events marks a point of no return, a descent into an abyss from which there is no escape. The man's actions, driven by the spectres of his past and the haunting presence of the cat, cement his fate, dragging him into a darkness so profound that it mirrors the abysses of human nature and madness. A murder revealed. In a grim culmination of events sparked by guilt and spiralled into insanity, the narrator stands before the lifeless body of his wife, a direct consequence of his futile attempt to rid himself of the tormenting black cat. In a moment of sheer madness, his action transcends beyond an attack on the animal. It becomes an irreversible act of violence against the person who stood by him, his wife. The chaos that ensues is not just a physical struggle, but a profound inner turmoil, underscoring the depth of the man's descent into darkness. Panicked yet cunning, the man sets about concealing his dreadful deed. Driven by a primal urge to escape the consequences of his actions, he deliberates over methods of hiding the body. His mind races through dark avenues, contemplating the river and its murky depths, yet he settles on a more sinister plan. Employing cold calculation, he decides to wall up the corpse within the basement of his own house. Constructing a tomb within the recesses of the cellar, he secures his secret, concealing the evidence of his wrongdoing behind a facade of plaster and brick. His deed done, the narrator experiences a brief eerie calm. The cat, which had been the catalyst for this horrifying sequence of events, is conspicuously absent. It's as if, with the deed completed, the creature that haunted his steps has vanished into the ether, leaving the man in a hollow victory over his circumstances. Yet, this absence does not bring peace. Instead, it deepens the sense of unease, a prescient reminder that actions born of darkness yield no true escape. Days pass, and the man's confidence grows as no suspicions arise regarding his wife's disappearance. The police, dutiful in their investigation, visit the house, combing through it in search of clues. Their efforts, however, turn up nothing incriminating. The narrator's carefully constructed facade seems impenetrable, a testament to the depths he's plunged in his attempt to erase his heinous act. He even leads the officers through the house, feigning innocence with a bravado that borders on the audacious. In a final act of overconfidence, driven perhaps by a perverse desire to flaunt his supposed cleverness, the narrator taps on the very wall behind which his wife's body is concealed. This gesture, meant to underscore his innocence, becomes his undoing. From within the sealed tomb, a sound emerges, 
a mournful, beseeching cry that captures the attention of all present. It's the cat, whose life the narrator had sought to end, now revealing the horror hidden within the wall. The police, alerted by the cat's cries, tear down the wall, uncovering not only the body of the wife, but the living evidence of the narrator's guilt, the black cat perched atop her head. This revelation serves as a chilling denouement to a tale steeped in darkness. The narrator, whose descent into madness was marked by violence and turmoil, finds his fate sealed not by external forces, but by his own actions. The cat, a symbol of his guilt and the instrument of his downfall, remains the final witness to his undoing. In a twist of poetic justice, it's the very creature he sought to destroy that exposes his crime, ensuring that the shadows he embraced so fully in life follow him into the bleakness of his inevitable punishment. Thank you.